just massage it. No shoes, harage it. Wrist so rocket, I'm so cocky. Smoking on that broccoli, chopping and knocking. Drinking and popping, got everybody jockeying. Big wheels, draw a lot of attention. Screw the name, you got the mention. Whole script to pay tuition. Need some bait, I'm going fishing. SUV on 30 inches, looking for me, I'm in the trenches. Couldn't work up on the bitches. What's going on guys, it's Pac-Man Jones And today, um, I'm gonna bring you another artist uh, The big homie Screw uh, Real name, Joshua Varner uh, Born in 1978 in uh, Savannah, Georgia uh, Man, uh, he was with uh, Booga and uh, Screw uh, Booga and uh, Sirius for the rap group Hella Flow And by the way, I'm gonna cover Booga uh, and cause uh, Booger he has uh, a story to himself too. I just had to cover um, Screw first because Screw it just has a lot of information and it's just. Uh, but the big homie Screw, um, he got his name Screw because of Scrooge McDuck's, uh, you know, the character that was about the money. And you know, Screw was about the money. You know, that's one thing I can say about him. You know, he had a lot of cash. I mean, he he showed his wealth. I mean, he had. Nice cars and all that, uh, Mercedes Benz, um, you know, nice uh, AMG kits, you know, but um, and um, he associated with Young Jeezy uh, with the whole CTE, um, Hella Flow thing. Uh, really, Hella Flow was like an underbranch to me as far as you know associated acts um, because you know. Screw, I mean, Screw and Young Jeezy, I don't know how they known each other, but I mean, when they linked up, I mean, uh, they had a song called, uh, I believe, uh, 16 East, uh, 16 West, something like that, but um, I mean, yeah, Nickname, Nickname, yeah, that's the song, um, pretty pretty decent record, um, and uh, Booga, he, he also, everywhere Booga went, I mean, Screw was there. I mean, Screw, you know, held down Booger, you know, all the way through. I mean, they was, they was close. I mean, they was homies. Um, like you'll see Screw and uh, Booger videos, like uh, Ball Game, and there was another interview. Uh, Booger was there, and uh, basically the whole Hella Flow was there, and uh, Hella Flow had some other uh, guys to the group too, like uh, Young Damon and. Um, there was a few other artists that was uh, with them, but um, I mean they were they were, they were like maybe the second Savannah's second, you know, gangster rap group besides Crime Affiliates that I could think of that was like major, you know, to me. Uh, but as far as uh, Screws rap content, uh, it's different from you know. Anybody that's I heard that's from Savannah, you know, where he shots out, you know, you know where he's from and nothing like that. He don't really shot out where he's from like that. And I and I looked at, looked back at his, at his videos because you know usually you can tell in somebody's videos you know where they shot out where they're from, but um, in his videos um, it look like you know it's it's like West Side location, so I assume that he associates with the West Side. Plus, in one of his videos, um, <laughs> actually. Uh, my neighbor, uh, I'm not going to point him out who, but he's in the uh, video with the uh, held up high at the end. Um, my neighbor, well, he, he moved now, but my neighbor was in that video. And I had a uh, double tick. I was like, what? That's That was my like old neighbor. But, you know, I guess, you know, he knew Screw too. I mean, you know, I guess. The thing about the West Side is, you know, um, people know each other, you know. If you're in, if you're on the west side and you live maybe you know five minutes away on the other side of the west side, I mean, more than likely you know the person. I mean, I got family members on the west side too. I mean, I know people on the west side majority. So, but still with his rap content, uh, he rapped about you know money, you know how, uh, you know the Savannah life is, um, you know street money, drugs, you know being in a trap house. Selling dope, you know, I got to work, you know, he just, he just was about street life, 
he definitely was. Um, he, he was another artist that was from Savannah that was, you can tell he was about the street life because because when he was arrested, um, he was actually on the run in 2010. Uh, he was just wanted. And um, he was arrested in 2013 in his uh, East Point home in uh, Atlanta, Georgia. I believe East Point is like in or near Atlanta, Georgia. So correct me if I'm wrong. But um, he was near Atlanta because, you know, like I said, when you're in Savannah and you're known like that for being in the streets, you got to move. So he actually did half of what I said, right, you know, move to another city because, you know, in Atlanta, you know, nobody's really going to fuck with you like that. Um, I mean, it's just a bigger city, but um, but he was found with uh, uh, more than 100 pounds of marijuana, a large amount of methamphetamine, a gun in two vehicles found when Bonner was arrested and seized by authorities. So if you being caught with 100 pounds, you ain't about street life. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what it is. I mean, that's a lot of dope where I'm from. If you got 100 pounds, and more than likely, if you got 100 pounds, you can touch more than 100 pounds. You can probably touch you know, 200 pounds, you could probably touch 300 pounds, so, screw had work, I mean, literally in his raps, when he said, all I talk about is work, literally, I, I never doubted him, <laughs> I mean, he just, that's a lot of dope, I'm sorry, but, that's what the, uh, police found him with, and, um, uh, right now, he's currently just arrested, just on, uh, conspiracy to distrib uh, to distribute, which is, I mean, I would have thought they would have charged him with a little bit more, but I mean, so far that's what he, that's what he's just charged with. Uh, so far, uh, I'm gonna just read some of this out to you. Um, I'm gonna just try to sum it up. It just basically says a Savannah man is wanted for a conspiracy to possess with intent to, to distribute and with uh, control, controlled substances. Uh, it says Joshua Emmanuel Varner, 34. Wow, I didn't know he was that old. Was indicted in a major drug conspiracy case by the DA in June 2010. Warner was one of 21 defendants in the case. All the other defendants have been prosecuted, but except for Warner, and he's was the only one that was hasn't been prosecuted yet because he was, you know, on the run for about three years, uh, hiding in Atlanta, which. Uh, that was kind of smart, but at the same time, if you're going to run away from the police, if you got 100 pounds and you got all the money, I mean, I wouldn't be hiding in Atlanta. I would be hiding in another country. I mean, go to Brazil, go to hell. With that money, you can go anywhere and live. I mean, you have to change your lifestyle. I mean, you probably couldn't rap about street money anymore, but hey, with that money, I mean, sometimes you just got to know when the get out the game and I'm gonna read something else from a different article it says in 2008 CNT began an investigation a drug trafficking ring based on tips from an informant known as T2 the ring was known to be run out of coastal state prison near Garden City according to T2 the uh, informant uh, the key uh, person in the case was James Williams a coastal correctional officer and a brother of a uh, uh, police officer uh, when CNT realized the investigation was going dry they realized why and they noticed that um, Malik Khalees uh, a black officer was um, given basically giving screw information about yeah um, the police is looking for you you know you should uh Dip around the other way, and it was another incident that happened where Khalees ran into Screw, and Screw said he had five pounds of uh, weed on him and eighty five hundred dollars, and you know Khalees just let him go, and um, actually Screw actually testified this in court, but um, Khalees uh, hasn't been well. Basically, it was ruled a mistrial and. His child is uh, thrown out, not screwed, but 
the former police um, police officer. Uh, he's no longer working for uh, Chatham County, I believe. He's just he's just out. Uh, I don't know about his whereabouts or nothing like that. But um, that just shows you, man, that you know there are some dirty cops out here. Not just some. There's many, you know. And if they know that you're working with a lot of money, they might w try to work with you. And that's just, that was something bad in the first place. You know, Screw should have never did something like that. Um, you know, get involved with police because, you know, police, they'll just, they might try to act like they're cool with you now. But, you know, later on, they might be working on the case against you, especially if you got pounds and money like that uh, probably most of the money is probably illegitimate anyway but um he's serving fed time so he's not in Chatham County uh, by any means he's serving like actual fed time I don't it doesn't say how many years he's serving I don't believe he's uh, convicted yet I don't think he, he his trial has started it doesn't I haven't seen any extra information about his trial but if anything changes, I'll uh, keep that updated. And basically what got Khalees arrested was that it was a pattern when he would disappear from, uh, I guess, this uh, this room with uh, CNT guys without any author authorization. So I guess when you uh, leave the room, uh, you got to be authorized to leave. And um, at the same time, they were uh, trying to pin a case on uh, Joshua Bonner, a.k.a. Screw. And they kind of noticed something that was up. So eventually they put a wiretap on Screw. And, um, you know, uh, Khalees, he was aware about it. And um, he basically told Screw, uh, hey, you might need to uh, switch your phone because your phone tapped. And, um, you know, when they lost the lead like that, they wondered why. And, it just it was the uh, same pattern kept on ha happening and they realized that you know Khalees was the main one helping screw out getting away from the police you know avoiding the police and it also says uh, CNT director Roy Harris set up a sting on his own people to find the rat uh, departed and uh, basically bogus info was given to Khalees that a uh, fourth wire tap was on Varner, and right before the fake tap was supposedly going live, Varner again dropped his cell phone. So that again indicated that uh, he gave information to Screw, and it was a, a fake wire tap. It, it wasn't nothing was really was going to happen. And later, CNT uh, got in info that Screw was going to meet a woman supposedly about a drug deal and uh, when they heard that Khalees uh, excused himself again and uh, it said that it, he was overheard on a police radio station asking the squad car to pull, pull over the woman to uh, interrupt the meeting so um, Screw wouldn't get arrested so Khalees was giving Screw uh, major tips you know to to get away with uh, a lot of crimes that probably would have been put him away years ago. I mean, years ago. But uh, besides the case, you know, Screw lived his lyrics um, all about drugs. You know, definitely he had a lot of money. I mean, there was no lack of money in his life. But it's just at the same time, if you got all that money and you got all this work, you know, you could, you know, make yourself less hot and take yourself to another country, take yourself to hell, take yourself to another state. But, you know, when somebody has an investigation going on you, I mean, it's only a matter of time before you get caught up, you know, and when you are a rapper, you got to know when to separate your street life from entertainment and I don't think uh, his videos probably helped either <laughs> I mean trash bag trash bags full of dope 
I mean, that probably didn't help in guns in his videos. Um, but you just got to know, okay, if I'm so street, then, you know, what else? What else is next? I mean, you know, like they say, there's only one or two ways you can end out jail or dead. You know, he didn't end up dead, uh, even though I believe there was uh, a few uh, attempts on his life. Uh, locally, um, it hasn't been reported on uh, W2OC, but I mean, people in the streets say he's, he's been involved in shootouts. So, I mean, you just got to know when to, when to stop. But, you know, a street nigga don't know when to stop. I mean, he just going to keep getting money. He just going to keep buying guns. He just going to keep smoking dope, buying dope. I mean, and uh, all I can say about Screw is, uh, you know, at least he's still alive, you know, he could have ended up dead, like Booger, you know, rest in peace to him, and by the way, I'm gonna do a video on him pretty soon, I'm just, I'm really waiting on my camera to come, it should come today, so I could uh, definitely go uh, show you guys, you know, where Booger, you know, was from, and you know, his death site, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll roll by, I'll ride by there and show you guys. Uh, how things look like over there As soon as it comes I swear to you I'm going I'm to get it together um, It's Pac-Man Jones From Savannah Seaport News And I'm out I keep